Are you looking for a free open source alternative to Sentry? Let's discover BugSync, a free self-hosted Sentry compatible error tracking platform. This lightweight tool keeps you informed about errors in your front-end or back-end projects with ease. Perfect for solo developers or small teams, BugSync offers a simple, reliable and cost-free solution to answer the quality of your deployed applications. To start using BugSync, you can use their cloud version. It's free for one user and 5,000 of error events, then starts at 15 euros per month for teams and 50,000 error events. Or to have it for free with unlimited users and events, you can self-deploy it by following their installation guide on their documentation. Or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it seamlessly on your server or the cloud provider of your choice. We handle the installation, backups, updates, and ongoing maintenance for you. To start using BugSync on our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service, search for BugSync and select. From there, you have the choice between different cloud providers, regions, and service plans based on your needs. Once you have made your choice, click on the next button on the bottom right. On the next screen, you can adjust more advanced settings and choose between different levels of support. The first one is free and included by default. Once you're all good, hit the Create Service button. Once your instance is ready, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on LSTO administration dashboard for your BugSync instance. Copy the password into your clipboard and follow the admin UI link. Type your email and paste the password from your clipboard and then click on login. The UI is quite minimalist. You have two main options, either teams or projects. I recommend you to start by creating a team. Let's do it, new team. We name it LSTO and then you can choose different visibility, joinable, discoverable, or hidden. To know precisely what option is doing what, you have the documentation telling you that joinable is anyone can join, discoverable is the team is visible in lists, but there is no join button, which means the user will need to request to join, or hidden, they won't see it at all, unless they are part of it. Let's stick to discoverable and save. Once created, you can invite team members. You type their email address and choose between a member or admin role. And once your team is ready, you can create your project. From there, you can see your projects, the one from different teams you're part of, and other projects from other members but not part of teams. Let's create a new project. And here you can decide which team it belongs to, or if it's only your project, you can unselect the team. Let's stick to LSTO team and name our project next demo. Visibility, we want only the team members to see it. But again, you have the choice between joinable or discoverable. And the number max of event we want to retain. Let's give the default value. I guess it's enough. And then save. Now we have the instruction to connect our application to BugSync. And we have the mention that it is compatible with the Sentry SDK. Let's see the different language specific instructions. Let's choose JavaScript. And we have guidelines to install the SDK, initialize it and verify the setup. But because it is using Sentry, I recommend you to use directly Sentry documentation to know how to install it for the framework of your choice. There are more options and it's more specific to each framework. I chose Next.js, so first I need to create an application. To create a Next.js application, we need to run npx create next app latest and our project name. Let's do it, paste, and I will put it in a folder, bugsync demo. Enter. Then I have the settings. Do I want to use TypeScript? No. Yes. 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 No. No. And no. Okay, perfect. It's installing and creating my next JS app. Okay, it was created successfully. Now I need to open the folder it created. Okay, let's open it. Before adding the Sentry SDK for BugSync, let's try our app. npm run dev. I think the installation is already done. Let's follow the link and perfect, we have the default Next.js application. Now we can see how to add the Sentry SDK to our app. 
there is a wizard available, we simply run it with Next.js. Let's stop the development server, paste the command and follow the wizard. Are you using Sentry SaaS or self-hosted Sentry? I tried to use self-hosted, but it didn't work. So I will use the SaaS version and then we will connect our bug sync. So let's enter. Do we have a Sentry account? Yes. Okay, I did the login process and now it's installing Sentry and adding the different configuration files it requires. Do I want to root Sentry requests? I don't know. No. Okay, okay, okay. And I'm not using CI CD tool. Perfect. So there is a Sentry example page we can try to have our first issue. But if I do it right now, it will do it uh, towards Sentry and not our BugSync instance. What we need to do if we go to BugSync documentation and how to set up the SDK is to change the DSN URL to point towards our instance. You can get the URL from here and we need to change it at three different places. We have here the edge config. Oops, here it is. So right now it is towards Sentry. We replace with the URL of our instance. You also do it for the server if you chose Next.js. And there is one last place. You can search DSN in the project which is instrumentation client and here too. Okay, save. Now the setup should be complete. We can run again the development server. Then I don't remember the name of the page created. Uh, pages Sentry example page slash Sentry example page. We can open it. We have this page. If we click, it will throw a sample error. And we have the Next.js error exception catcher showing us it raised an exception. Now let's try to go to our project and see if it discovered an exception. And here we have our error. By the way, it triggered two errors. The first one from Sentry example page and another one from API Sentry example API. Let's open it. But if you are familiar with Sentry, the UI of BugSync is very similar to it, even if they made some different choices. You have the call stack showing you which lines triggered the error, the detail about the browser and environment, when it happened and how many times. Let's resolve it and let's trigger another error but ourselves. Let's open the index page, which contains everything. Uh, I think they have a deploy button. Instead of being a link, we can transform it into a button. On click, we will call a trigger error function we will create. And trigger error. What it will do is a call to a function that doesn't exist. Trigger error now. Going back to the main page, we can try deploy now. And we have the exception trigger error now is not defined. Let's reload it and try again. We have the exception thrown a second time. If we go back to the list of our issues, we can see we have the new error trigger error now is not defined. And we only have two issues because the previous one is now marked as resolve. Let's go back to the open expand the trigger error now and this time we have correctly two number of events and we can switch from one so we have the detail of when and which device or the other occurrence but i used the same browser for it if not you would see the differences here on the right you have different tabs here the event details showing you an advanced panel to get all the information to reproduce and understand when and where it happened you also have the breadcrumbs to understand the user journey if it is in the front end or what happened in the back end before triggering this error. Here we can see everything that happened. And then we had that UI click and it triggered the issue. So we know when we click on this button, then it created the issue. Then you have event list. 
to find all the different occurrences. So if you have a big project with a lot of users, you can see if the issue is happening to many users or only certain ones. You also have tags, which is what we see on the right with the detail of the browser, but this time it's grouped by the number of occurrence, which can help understand on which browser it happens, on which environment, on what OS, helping you diagnosing the issues and resolving them. You also have the grouping showing you how the issue is grouped, which is based on the text it found in the exception and also history to see when it happened the first time, if it was resolved in between. And you can also type different messages, closing, but keep an eye on it. If it happens again, post comment this way, you can track and manage your issues the best way possible. Also, if it's something you understand why it's happening, it's not resolved yet, but you don't want to see it again and again, you can mute it or mute it for a period of time. The time you figure the issue and deploy the fix to avoid some noise. And if you go to projects, you can also adjust the notification settings. If you click on add, you can add Slack to receive messages when an issue arrives. As always, I highly recommend you to check the documentation for features that I didn't cover in this video that would benefit you for your use cases. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering BugSync with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.